Hey, how are you doing? I'm Tom and I'd like to show you how to turn this into something like this. So here is the SVG that we are going to animate. What we are going to do is copy the SVG source code, search for SVG to JSX and click the first result. Now paste your SVG. On the right hand side you can see the SVG that got converted to JSX. Finally copy the JSX and paste it into your editor. After hit save and open the dev server you should see something like this in your browser. Let's go ahead and start coding. First let's decrease the size a little bit so that it fits in the screen. What we're gonna do next is to extract the four envelopes that you can see in the image into separate React components so that it's easier to work with. The components are going to accept props and pass them onto a G component which is something like a div in HTML but for SVG. Let's do that for all four envelopes. Create an array and put the newly created envelope components in there. Do not forget to pass the key prop to each item in this array. Now comes the hard part. We need to locate the SVG code that corresponds to these envelope components. Right click one of the envelopes and choose inspect element from the pop-up menu and the DevTools will appear. Try to see which SVG elements correspond to the parts of the envelopes. You can also press delete and delete some parts of the SVG and see how the image is affected. You know, just play with it and try to see a pattern. After playing with it for a while, I can see that one envelope consists of two path and one G element. Click one of the path elements and copy some of your contents. This way, it will be easy for you to locate it in your text editor. Search for whatever you have copied and grab two path and one G elements and put it into the envelope component that you have already created. If you save the file, the envelope will disappear. That's because you have to include the array of the envelope components into the SVG code. The next part is quite boring. You need to locate the remaining envelopes in your SVG code and put them into the envelope components. Before we dive into animating the image, we need something to trigger the animation. Grab the use state hook from React and create a simple toggle button. We're gonna use React Spring library for the animation itself. Go ahead and import animated and use springs from the library. We'll pass two arguments to the use springs hook. The first one is going to be the number of items we want to animate. The second one is going to be an array in which we're going to specify how the animation should behave. What CSS properties we want to animate? Well, I think using transform and opacity is a good start. As for the transform property, we're going to use translate3d 
in order to move the envelopes from the left to the right and vice versa. When the toggle variable is true, we want the envelopes to stay at their initial position, so we pass 0px for all the translate3d arguments. When the toggle is false, we want the envelopes to move to the left, so let's pass minus 400 for the first argument and 0 for the remaining ones. As for the opacity, we want full opacity when the toggle variable is true and no opacity when the toggle variable is false. The useSprings hook returns an array of animated values that we can map over to create animated envelopes. In the function that we pass to the map function, we are going to use animated.g. Using animated.g instead of a regular g element enables us to pass animated values from React Spring into the style property of the element. But first, let's pass a corresponding envelope item from the envelopes array as children. Don't forget to pass a key property and we'll just use index. Finally, pass the animated style variable to the style property. After we change envelopes for animated envelopes in the SVG code, we should be good to go. Alright, so there seems to be problem within our animation. The opacity is getting applied properly, but the transform seems to not be getting applied at all. Well, let's just try to debug that. So it seems like I forgot to pass px right after 400. Did it do the trick? Well, it seems like it didn't. So the other problem seems to be that I pass translate instead of translate3d. Let's see if that works. Alright, it worked. The envelopes are now being animated. Honestly? I think there is still plenty of room for improvement for this animation. Look at the trajectory of the envelopes. It seems like it's quite short and the opacity is not really getting applied. To fix it, we need to change the viewbox on the SVG element. The viewbox specifies what part of the SVG is visible. The first number specifies the leftmost point, so let's change that. If we now hit save, the image gets shifted a little bit to the right hand side and there's more room on the left hand side. But there is a problem, the image is cropped. That's because the third number in the viewbox doesn't specify the rightmost point, but it specifies the width of the SVG. So if we decreased the leftmost point by 200, we also need to increase the width by 200. Let's hit save and see if the animation looks good. It seems like it does. The next problem is a little bit trickier. Although the envelopes are moving from left to right and vice versa, there is no upwards and downwards movement. It looks really unnatural because the envelopes are a little bit rotated and we don't account for that rotation. So the question is, how to find out what the right amount of upwards and downwards movement is. In other words, what value should we pass as the second argument to the translate3d function. You could either try to pass some random values and see if it looks natural and fine tune the animation this way, or we can use a little bit of trigonometry to try to find out the right digits. So I decided to use trigonometry just to be super precise. The formula that we are going to use for the y part of the animation, that is the second argument that we pass to the translate3d property, is 400 pixels times cosine of the angle at which the envelopes are rotated. To find out the exact angle, go to the DevTools, try to locate the envelope, and grab the angle. You can now use your calculator or you can just trust me that the result is 49. 
Now you can pass 49 as the second argument to the translate 3D function and let's see if it did the job. Unfortunately, the envelopes are moving, but they are not moving in the right direction and that's because I accidentally passed 49 instead of minus 49. Once we fix that and play the animation again, you can see that the envelopes are moving in a very natural direction. So there's one more problem that I'd like to tackle. And that is that the envelopes are moving as a group. And I would really like them to be moved individually, one after another, to create a beautiful staggered animation effect. In order to do that, there is basically two options. You could either use the use trail hook from React Spring or use the delay property on the use springs hook. We are going to do the latter. If we pass, say, 100 milliseconds as the delay property, it's not really going to work because it's going to add the same delay to every individual element, so there's not going to be any staggered effect. Let's maybe change the delay to 1 second instead of 100 milliseconds and see what it does. You can see that there is a delay after we press the toggle animation button. But the very same delay is applied to all elements in the group. Instead, we want a different delay to be applied to different envelopes. To achieve that, we can leverage the fact that a index is passed to the map function and the index is different for every envelope. We can specify the delay as i times 100 so that there is not going to be any delay for the first envelope, 100 milliseconds for the second, and so on. Now, if you play the animation, the envelopes are not moving as a one group, but they are moving one after another. Alright, so that's all I've got for you today. What I'd really appreciate from you is if you give me some feedback on this video right in the comment section. Just type in what you liked about the video, what you didn't like, and with that, see you next time.